Crying for the sun at night, you don't notice the stars, the great Indian author Rabindranath Tagore once said. But how beautiful it is sometimes to stop in your striving and enjoy the clear night sky. Just imagine, each visible star is unique, and each of them is a whole world. And how many stars we can't see, how many we don't know about. In fact, what do we know about stars? What are they made of, what color they are, what size they are, and what are their special features? Let's find out. But first, we need to define what a star is. From modern definitions of the term, we can distinguish that a star is a massive self-luminous celestial body having a gas or plasma nature in which thermonuclear reactions take place, have taken place, or will take place. Azagov defines a star as follows. It is a celestial body, a glowing ball of gas, visible at night as a glowing. You may have noticed that both definitions contain words with the root light. This is not surprising. After all, the most common scheme for classifying stars is by spectral class, which is based on their temperature and luminosity. Understanding that the apparent brightness depends on the distance, the ancient Greeks tried to determine the distance to the stars by the annual parallax, that is, the change in the background of the object, depending on which side of the sun the observer looks at it. But it was not until 1837 that Dane Friedrich Struve succeeded. After that, a correction for distance was made in the estimation of the luminosity of stars. The next step was taken at the beginning of the last century when spectral analysis made it possible to turn the color of a star, which until then had been estimated subjectively, into an accurate numerical characteristic. And in 1910, the famous diagram of the relationship between spectrum and luminosity, compiled by Dane Einar Hertzsprung and the American Henry Russell, appeared. After summarizing the accumulated data, the scientists found that 80% of the luminaries lined up from the lower right to the upper left corner. This region was called the main sequence characteristics of main sequence stars depend primarily on mass and, to a much lesser extent, on age and initial chemical composition. The greater the mass of the star, the greater its temperature, radius, and luminosity, and the shorter its lifespan on the main sequence. The main sequence stage ends when there is too little hydrogen left in the star's core and its combustion cannot continue in the same mode. Different stars behave differently after this. Conventionally by spectral class, stars can be represented as follows, blue, O, helium stars with surface temperatures above 30,000 Kelvin, blue-white, B, helium luminaries, 10,000 to 30,000 Kelvin, white, A, hydrogen stars with temperatures of 7,400 to 10,000 Kelvin, yellow-white, F, which have spectrum features due to ionized calcium and temperatures reaching 6,000 to 7,200 Kelvin, yellow, G, with ionized calcium and 5,200 to 6,000 degrees. By the way, our sun is also a yellow dwarf, orange, K, where mostly neutral metal spectrum lines are observed and temperatures range from 3,500 to 5,200 degrees Kelvin, red, M, stars have temperatures from 2,500 to 3,500 degrees Kelvin and the spectrum contains many metal and molecular lines. The L, T, and Y classes are brown dwarf classes in descending order of temperature, up to 600 Kelvin. W classes are also sometimes used for wolf ray stars, P for planetary nebulae, and Q for new stars. This is what is commonly used today. Based on the above, astronomy distinguishes between the following types of stars, red giants and supergiants. These are two types of stars, characterized by small surface temperatures from 300K to 5000K, but large luminosities. In their depths, they burn helium, which is transformed into carbon. These types of stars include stars of the two spectral classes M and K, that is, red and orange. They have diameters from 100 to 800 solar. But there are exceptions, for example, YV Big Dog has a diameter of 1,024 solar diameters. White dwarfs, white dwarfs are fully evolved stars that are the cores of stars that have lost their outer shells due to their own expansion. These stars are small, about 100 times smaller than the sun, and luminous, 10,000 times smaller than the sun. At such a small size, they have a mass approximately equal to the mass of our sun. 
This is explained by the high density of their substance. Such density leads to the fact that white dwarfs are clots of electron nuclear plasma and are completely deprived of their energy source. They shine by depleting their own heat supply. Brown dwarfs, brown dwarfs are a type of star in which the loss of energy for radiation is not compensated for by their nuclear reactions. Previously, it was thought that these were hypothetical objects, as such objects must, in all likelihood, exist. And in 2004, 2M1207, a brown dwarf in the constellation Hydra, was discovered. Brown dwarfs have very, very small sizes, somewhere between 12.5 and 80.3 times the size of Jupiter. The nuclei have nuclear reactions involving nuclei of light elements. After they are exhausted, the thermonuclear reaction stops and the star will completely extinguish, turning into some sort of planet-like object. Variable stars, variable stars are types of stars in which there is, at least once, a change in their brightness value. The reasons for this are different, both in thermal processes and the fact that the star is in a binary system. There are different types of variable stars, differing in the mechanisms of change in their brightness. Pulsating variables, eruptive variables, rotating variables, cataclysmic variables, eclipsing binary systems, optical variables, binary systems with hard X-ray emission. T Taurus type stars, this type of star is named after its obvious representative, the constellation Taurus. Representatives of this species are variable stars of spectral class F to M, which can be found near molecular clouds. They have highly irregular brightness variability. Their surface temperatures and masses are similar to those of the main sequence stars, but their radii, and accordingly, their luminosities are larger. Another difference between Taurus-type stars and main-sequence stars is that their main energy source is the gravitational contraction of the star itself. Wolf-ray-type stars, such stars are characterized by high luminosities of about 4,000 times the solar luminosity and temperatures greater than 50,000 Kelvin. These stars are relatively small, on the order of 10 to 15 times larger than our Sun, and have a mass of about 10 solar masses. The wolf ray stars differ from other stars with the same temperatures by their special spectra. The final point in the question of the origin of the wolf ray stars has not yet been put. However, a popular hypothesis is that these stars are the helium remnants of large and massive stars. In our galaxy, to date, 230 stars of this type have been discovered. Supernovae. A supernova is a star that, due to its contraction, explodes at a certain stage of its evolution. Such an explosion, to an outside observer, will look like a spontaneous, very strong increase in the brightness of such a luminary. And such an effect can be observed at very large distances. What distinguishes supernovae from new stars is the strength of the explosion that occurs. New, new stars, like supernovae, are cataclysmic variables. In the former, the change in brightness is not as spontaneous as in the latter and can last for more than one year. Therefore, the new stars were distributed into groups differing from each other by the time of the star's brightness at its maximum. Hypernovae Hypernovae are hypothetical types of stars describing exploding stars with masses greater than 100 times the solar mass. In fact, hypernovae are very large supernovae of stars. It has been suggested that 440 million years ago there might have been an explosion of a hypernova star which would have given the nickel isotope 56 Ni to Earth from the exploding source. Ultrabright X-ray sources, these are sources of strong X-rays. They are assumed to have a mass of 10,000 solar masses. These radiations are of a periodic nature, varying from a few seconds to a few years. What these sources are is still unclear, and there is much debate about them. The most popular opinion is that it is a black hole. Bright blue variables, or S goldfish type stars, are blue hypergiants with pulsating envelopes. Have irregular changes in their brightness with a large amplitude. It is assumed that the representatives of this type have large masses, about 150 solars, so the duration of their life is small, a couple of million years. Apparently, such luminaries are progenitors for wolf type stars, and eventually, they may explode as a hypernova. 
Unique Stars SS433 is an eclipsed X-ray double system. One component of this system is a massive star with a high temperature, somewhere in the 30,000s. The other is some kind of compact source, a black hole or neutron star, which has a huge mass. A jet of gas constantly flows from the star to this source and forms an accretion disk that outshines the main star with a period of 13 days. This compact companion is surrounded by plasma, which has a very high temperature and luminosity and is a source of strong X-ray radiation. A representative of SS-433 objects is the star V1343 in the constellation Eagle. Neutron stars, these are the cores of exploded stars in which further compression causes the core to consist entirely of neutrons. The masses of such stars range from about 1.44 solar masses, the Chandrasekhar limit, to the oppenheimer wolkoff limit, see website terminology, which will be different for each star. The radii of such stars are negligible, about 10 to 20 kilometers, neutron stars have a strong magnetic field and an incredibly fast rotation, about a thousand revolutions per second. As a consequence, there are such types of neutron stars as X-ray pulsars and radio pulsars. They emit respectively in the X-ray and radio wavelength ranges. Neutron stars are thought to be born from the explosion of a supernova. Stellar systems. Star systems are a collection of stars ranging from two to billions. If the system consists of two stars, it is a double star united by a common center of mass, or this center is some star. And if the system consists of more than 10 stars, it is a star cluster. Such clusters are divided into globular, scattered, and stellar associations. Galaxies, in fact, are also very large star systems that include different types of stars. Well, in conclusion, all I can say is to look at the sky more often, especially on a clear night. Carl Sagan, an astronomer from many years ago, famously stated that there are more stars than in the sky. The universe is more than the grains of sand on Earth's beaches. It is impossible to know everything. It is not known how many stars there are in the cosmos, but it is believed that there are at least a billion. At least one quadrillion. This is one followed by 24 zeros. British system. They come in many sizes and shapes. Some are very small, but they can be extremely heavy. The exotic neutron star. Others are lower mass, but much cooler and more common. The galaxies, including red dwarfs. The star we see and feel every day, the sun technically is a yellow dwarf and is therefore huge when compared to Earth. However, on a star scale, it is quite average as the universe contains sun. These stars are truly magnificent, like the UI Scuti. This gigantic ball of glowing plasma is a colossal feat. It is classified as a red supergiant and was once considered to be the largest star ever discovered. UI Scuti is located in the constellation Scutum. It was initially estimated that UI Scuti could be found approximately 1,700 times. It is larger than the Sun. It was thought to be the largest known object in the universe for many years. UI Scuti isn't making it to the top 10 list. This is why. The sudden downgrade occurs because the Earth is closer than initially thought. Recent and more accurate measurements have shown that UI Scuti is more probable too. It is 775 times larger than the Sun. It is still a huge star, but not nearly as large. There are many more that have been discovered. What is the largest star known in the universe? Stevenson 2-18 currently holds that title. Stevenson 2-18 is a truly huge, with an estimated radius of 2,150 miles, which is about the same size as the Sun. If we could replace the Sun, it would be 2,150 times larger. Sun and this massive star would then easily engulf the orbits Earth, Mars, Jupiter, even Saturn, which is 886 million miles or 1.4 billion kilometers away. This huge star is part of a small cluster called Stevenson 2, 
and is located in the middle of the Milky Way. It is approximately 20,000 light years from Earth. There are 26 other confirmed members of the cluster. Red supergiants are far more than any other known universe cluster. The newly titled largest star is also young. According to current understandings of stellar evolution, it is between 14 to 20 million years old. Stevenson 2 to 18 could even grow larger, eventually becoming something truly great. It is also known as a yellow hypergiant. This gigantic glowing being will be around for a few million years. Ball of plasma could also reach the end stages of its life as it rapidly burns through. It eventually burns its fuel and explodes in a spectacular but stunning supernova. Behind a black hole to remind Stevenson 2-18s of their once extreme parameters. Stargazer sizes can only be estimated based on measurements taken at great distances. We will need to wait for further studies to determine if Stevenson is alive and well. 2-18 is truly the king among the stars. Or another person is waiting for that top spot.